Hi there, welcome to No Nonsense Whiskey. My name's Vim PF, and on today's episode, we're gonna be covering the Douglas Lang Rock Island. Now, you may already know that the Rock Oyster part of the Remarkable Regional Malts has recently been rebranded. In fact, it was April in 2019, and it was rebranded from the Rock Oyster to the Rock Island. Now, this is kind of following some uh, feedback back to Douglas Lang that the Oyster, the part of the name that it was named after, was a little bit polarizing. You know, there's people that either love oysters or hate it. Personally, I'm one of the ones that hate it. And they were finding that it was kind of putting off people from buying it before they even tried it, which is a shame, as we know. If you want to check out my original review of that, go and check that out just up here. It was almost exactly a year ago to the date, and it was equally another hot summer in the UK. Hot for us, anyway. I know a lot of you guys get some hot weather way more than we do, but uh, in this study of mine, it is very warm with all these studio lights. So back to the whiskey itself, we've got the Rock Island. Now, this here is exactly the same liquid as the Rock Oyster. It's still small batch, so there's gonna be some slight variations in it. It's still island region based. Now, obviously we know the uh, Scotch regions really don't include islands, but when I talk about whiskey, I always include islands because although it's a kind of highlands, region it, it really isn't the same as those things the islands have a, a bit more sea maritiminess going on to them this also includes some isla so we're talking in here isla aaron jura and some orkney now it's, it's pretty easy to narrow down which ones those are for instance jura there's only one at the moment aaron there's only one at the moment and in orkney there's two so it's easy to narrow down the isla one's a little harder to narrow down but I don't know this for a fact, but I'll probably wager it's Kalila. It nearly always is when you get a blend like this. The others don't tend to put out stuff like that into blends. It happens. I'm not saying it's a hard and fast rule. I'm just saying usually if you put your finger on Kalila, you'll be right maybe 70-80% of the time. So we know this is about the same. It's about the same price. It's about 35 to 40 pounds in the UK. In the UK, you can still get the Rock Oyster. So if you're a collector, it might be a good time to go out and get that before it disappears forever. Maybe one day, if you're into that sort of thing, it would be worth some money in the secondary market. Personally, I think it's just a word, different. Just open it and drink it like the rest of them. It's also a 46.8%, just like the rest of the Remarkable Regional Malts and just like the old Rock Oyster. So, let's get into the whiskey itself and see if we can see any differences. If you've seen my review that I mentioned earlier, you can see the differences between that a year ago and now. Let's get into this one and see what we've got underneath coin number 146. Check out the description below if you're interested in getting that or any of the other coins that are available right now. So, this is the Rock Island. It's presented natural coloured, brilliant, and non-chill filtered, double brilliant. So it's kind of light, it's kind of a light characteristic, but that shouldn't put you off. If it does, maybe give it a try anyway, because it's probably fairly young. I'll wager it's less than 10 years, maybe just. There might be some older stuff in there as well. The reason why I say that is because they also have a 10 year old. So if this was over 10 year old, it would probably be in that one. Just a guess. Let's get onto the nose. Now it's a very sweet peat immediately. It's not an overpowering peat. It's not burnt wood. It's not ash. It's not medicinal. It's very nice and warming, a little bit earthy. But here's where it gets interesting. It's very briny as well. So it's that, that maritimeness that's going on they're talking about. It's almost reminiscent of a kind of a more heavily peated Talisker, but not quite. It, there's some differences in there as well. It's quite malty as well, but I think that's kind of an Aaron influence coming through. I didn't talk about this on my last video, but the Aaron influence for me is kind of, is in there. I'm not sure what the Jura is bringing to it. Personally, I find Jura, dare I say, a little bit boring. It, they, they don't tend to wow me as much as other malts do. Let's try on the palette, shall we? Mm. Now, for my my taste buds, which are very much acclimatising to peat these days, it's a very delicate peat. It's not overpowering at all. Again, it's not medicinal, it's not ashy, not really. It's more kind of 
burning, warming bonfire kind of peat, but it really isn't that high. It's, uh, it's only just a, an, an element of it. You could almost say this would be a good bridging whiskey into that kind of peat world if you're not really into your peat, but are looking to find some drams that might get you there. This might be a good shout. Usually I recommend things like the Highland Park 12 year, which is a very different kind of peat. It's like a heathery peat rather than a really earthy, boggy peat. Uh, and this is kind of on those lines. It's not like really, really earthy. Oh, once that kind of peat dissipates a little bit, you're getting some spices. It's kind of peppery spice, white, white ground pepper almost. And for me, the interesting thing about this, the nice rounded feature of it, it's got a little bit of citrus in there as well. So we're talking, it's almost orangey. I wouldn't want to put my finger on kind of exactly the kind of oranges we're talking about. That's not really what I do on the channel, but uh, I would say definitely on the orangey side of that citrus. Finish is mediumly long. It's not overly long. It's not super powerful, but it's uh, definitely interesting and it finishes on a kind of long peppery note. Most of that peat's disappeared by then from my palette. Maybe, maybe a touch ashy on the end, but if you're not into your peat, you might find it a bit over peated, but I really think that this is the kind of one that could bridge that gap and I think there's a lot to find in here for everybody who likes all different kinds of whiskey apart from maybe the really heavily sherry stuff. There's, there's no sherry elements to this at all. So there you go, that's kind of my overarching feelings of it. I think it's still the same liquid, it's still just as good. It, I think the actual rebranding itself is probably a good idea. Uh, Rock Oyster was an interesting name, all of the, the, the remarkable regional malts have interesting names. But uh, if, if they've had negative feedback on that, then I don't see why they can't change it. It was originally out in 2015, so it's only been around for a few years anyway. It was like the fourth in the Remarkable Regional Malts range. Uh, and now it's just going to be rock island from now on. Give it a go. With all these studio... Uh, is that it's got a little bit of citrusy in the air before.